Okay. So primarily this lab guide is what uh, we will be doing. So uh, yesterday's session, what we have done is we have we have set up the installations uh, using using our uh, manual steps. Okay. So manual steps is what uh, is what will uh, it, it is a history. His, I mean all the history, all the steps, all the step by step instructions are captured here. You can simply uh, do one step after another, uh, uh, starting from uh, step four. Okay, starting from step four, you can do it manually if you want to do a manual installation. So, manual installation is a little bit tricky. Uh, tricky in the sense you need to know the in and out of uh, uh, a little bit of knowledge and knowledge of the OS and how you can navigate around. Okay, so that is required. Now, if you are in a situation where uh, uh, I mean you don't know the Linux stuff and and easiest way for you or easiest way you can do is uh, uh, use one of the vendors. Uh, uh, tools. So the primary vendors for us are, uh, or the primary vendors in the market for big data are your Cloudera and your Hortonworks. Okay. So we have both the lab guides available. Okay. So this is your this is your Cloudera step. This guide will show you the installation on Cloudera administration. Uh, uh, I mean CDH. Uh, now the CDH is a Cloudera distribution including Apache Hadoop. And if you Scroll down to the bottom. You have a uh, you have a uh, a document uh, or a PDF which will indicate you how to install the same uh, Hadoop setup using Ambari. Now Ambari is a tool that is uh, that comes from uh, uh, that comes from Hortonworks. Okay. Hortonworks calls the same uh, uh, GUI admin tool as Ambari. So different flavors available in the market now. I mean whenever you are I think I think it depends on which uh, uh, flavor you would be working on. So the company may, the organization or the company that you are going to work with may have a tie-up with Cloudera. So they will typically be uh, using Cloudera licenses. And in, if they have a tie-up with uh, Hortonworks, uh, so they might be uh, they might be downloading. I mean, using the Hortonworks uh, packages. So slightly different the way both these uh, uh, work. So but basically, in effect, yesterday when I showed you the version, right? <clears throat> Let me reconnect here. Okay, so let me clear this. So if I do a Hadoop version. So what you see here is it's a Hadoop 2.6.0 and CDH okay, appended here. So the core, the core of your Hadoop is your open source Apache uh, uh, Hadoop, which will, which is uh, I think the latest release is 2.7, but uh, the one which we have have downloaded is your Hadoop 2.6. Okay, in fact, they're not downloaded uh, open source uh, Apache. It's it's the uh, CDH is what we have installed, and with the CDH it comes. Okay, so CDH is like a wrapper around your open source Apache. Now, if I go by step by step, uh, what I'll do is I'll just quickly, quickly walk you through these you know, instructions step by step, okay? And uh, uh, and this will help you in uh, setting up your own uh, instance. So if I go, uh, uh, I mean, step one is what it is saying. You need to meet the prerequisites, okay? So what are the prerequisites? The primary prerequisites are for any servers uh, you are setting up as a cluster, they should be able to talk to each other. Okay, they should be able to talk to each other. That means the communication should be happening. Now, the three instances that were given to me by, uh, uh, I mean, yesterday, were these three instances: the B1, B2, and B3. Okay, so these these are the three instances which I will I want to set up my Hadoop cluster on. Okay, so yesterday's steps, what we have done, we have done a manual installation. So if I see, or if I do JPS or sudo. Oops, I'm not showing you. JPS, you are HDFS. JPS. So JPS is a Java process monitor which comes along with your JDK installation. Okay, whenever you set up and install your Java, uh, this JPS is also part of your uh, uh, JDK package. So, a uh, quick uh, couple of, I mean, uh, quickly on the Linux stuff here. Uh, how do you know which uh, uh, which version of, uh, I mean, which JDK is installed? You can do a which of Java, which will tell you where your Java is installed in. So, you can do a ls uh, on this location. 
binary path and uh, Java. This will point you to the alternatives, but this is how your, I mean, basically, this is how it is set up in your uh, 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 in your environment or in any production environment. Okay, so this is pointing to the alternatives. So the alternatives are the ones which these are all soft link guys. Okay, the soft links. Okay, this soft link is where it is actually pointing you to your actual JDK installation where your uh, uh, Java is installed. So if I do, uh, if I go inside user library, then uh, JVM, then you have uh, Java 7 Oracle and uh, uh, JRE and the bin. Here is where all your binaries are available. Now your Java is being picked up from this location. Okay. In the same way you can also look at uh, which uh, JPS from where this is being looked up. So you can do uh, this is again will be pointing into an alternative. <coughs> so this is also near binary location, right? So uh, this is coming up from here. All right. So your JPS is uh, here. This one. This is your JPS. So basically, how how are you invoking this and all is because if you set up your Java home right so uh, Java home right now is not set up anything but basically uh, I think uh, uh, I mean uh, JPS if I do JPS it, not, yeah, it is giving you the JPS location so so in your bash RC okay, I, anyway today I'll show you what what needs to be set up in the bash RC so we'll uh, we'll, we'll, uh, I will, I'll, I'll walk you through those steps as well Okay, so JPS is a Java process monitor which will give you the listing of hotspot JVMs running in there. Now, if I want to do it, the other way to list the process running is PS hyphen EF. Okay, PS hyphen EF. Uh, PS hyphen EF is an execution process. Okay, PS is a process state. Okay, and EF are the switches that go inside or the parameters that you pass on to your your uh, your, uh, uh, your program, your tool, PS tool, and you're doing it. Well. So grep is what grep is you're searching for a pattern okay you're searching for a pattern and what pattern i'm searching and I'm, I'm searching for the pattern uh in the java i can do a java it will give me all the java processes now if you step back and see everything i said is uh, uh everything is a java based uh, uh is uh, i mean your hadoop is a java based uh, uh is a java based framework so you can search for java or you can do individually also if i want to see uh you can I can get a data node process also. So this is the user ID under which the data node has started, and this is the process identifier. Okay. So if you know the PID, right? So when I do a JPS here, the process identifier 7505 is what is the process identifier of this one. Okay. So so if I, if you know the PID, so this is this is what is indicating. So it is indicating JPS is simply telling you what is the process running and associated with which daemon okay let's quick uh, Linux stuff <coughs> okay. so let's go back to your home directory uh, cd tilde okay this is your tilde of, this is your tilde uh, uh, character tilde character will take you to your home directory okay so the tilde is uh, located on your uh, uh, just below escape key or uh, before your uh, numeric one on the keyboard so if I do a PWD present working directory, so this is what my present working directory is. Okay, this is what is the directory set up here. <coughs> now, uh, coming back to our installation steps, uh, so what we're doing is today uh, we'll be setting up a three-node cluster using the uh, using all three uh, Amazon instances, and uh, and one of them will install Cloud Manager, and the rest of them would be. Uh, uh, will be agent, adding as agents or uh, we can spin up a name node, data nodes and resource manager and the node managers. Okay. Now, uh, first machine, I already did some setup yesterday, so I don't want to use that again. So I will be using the second machine as my uh, primary uh, uh, Cloudera installation, uh, 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 Cloudera installation uh, manager. So let's first start uh, start with adding even the nodes here the one which we did was uh, yesterday it's uh, instance uh, b1 right so instance 1 b2 okay that's that's batch 2 is what I'm just referring to uh, let me quickly delete this I'm having too many instances set up here 
Oops, I mean, to the wrong one. Okay, so instance uh, instance one B two batch two. Okay, that's what I'm just to, uh, easier for me to understand. So I would. Uh, one is asking. Uh, so why are you you choosing the second instance for CDH? Uh, well, basically you can use the first one also. Uh, I just want to make sure there are no packages installed from the beginning. I want to show you from the beginning what will happen if it's a plain uh, uh, plain machine, okay, which doesn't have a Java, which doesn't have uh, anything installed in there. See, on the first machine we already have Java installed, okay. So there might be some conflict with the uh, with the Java location with where your program manager installed Java and the way we have installed Java, okay. So I want to choose a machine which is plain which it does not have anything in there okay so I would be uh, I would I would be using my second instance so let me first add them into my party okay so my second instance I'm following it as instance 2 b2 okay and uh, as usual uh, just trying to make it change the appearance uh, it's only 12 Okay, uh, is node is not required, guys. The auth key is what is this one? Uh, the same auth key. Then I say say this. Okay, so I have instance two b two, which I'm loading in. Just verify the auth key is there, and I'm logging in here. Since I'm logging in for the first time, let's see what is there in this machine. So I'm logged in here now. Uh, now let's see if Java is installed. Java version. Okay, and Java is not installed. Then Hadoop version. Hadoop is also not installed. And that's why it says Hadoop command not found. So this is a plain machine. Okay, a machine of about uh, 30 gig uh, disk space. Right. So a machine of 30 gig disk space and roughly about. Uh, 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 Roughly about 8 GB RAM. Okay, so I mean free hyphen M again. So these are all uh, Linux commands, guys. So the DFKH will provide you the the disk free. <coughs> okay, disk free and uh, uh, free is a command used to uh, list out the memory. Okay, so this is right now about roughly uh, roughly uh, uh, seven seven point five gig or eight gig. Okay, so so this is a memory. Now, 8 GB machine and 30 GB uh, uh, disk space is what I'm using right now. Okay. Now, the first thing that I want to do is I would need to make sure the hosts are able to talk to each other. Okay. So for that, what I need to do on each of the hosts, there is a file. Okay. On etc. etc hosts file. Okay. In the host, host file, what you contain, what contains is a is a is a, is a IP address and the host referring to it. Now, what I want to do is I want to add all three hosts here. So, because I'm having three different uh, instances, okay, three different hosts. Okay, so, I will add. Oops. The IP address. Okay, and then the DNS name. Because these are all internal to the each other, I can give a private DNS. This is the first instance I did. Now for the second one, also I do the same thing. Uh, this is very very important, guys. Uh, if you miss this step, uh, it is going to cause a lot of issues because your cloud manager is making sure, or it is actually contacting your uh, uh, local host file, uh, sorry, etc host file, and making sure that these servers are pingable or they are reachable. Okay, my 16, 61, and 62, three different servers. this and add in here okay 
this is on my server one so this is on my uh, instance two is what i've done now so the same thing you need to do on instance one and instance three also so copy this and go back to your instance one do the same thing sudo vi tc process so you're logged in as hdfs uh, i just want this login as ubuntu and uh, sudo vi tc open this uh, if you guys are not familiar with Linux, uh, I would say uh, just try to uh, go through uh, some of the basic Linux stuff. Okay, that is important because if you have to navigate and uh, do some changes, so if you want to make any modifications to the files and uh, folders, you need to know Linux stuff. Okay, so make sure you guys spend some time on that. Uh, I was looking into the what's on the key. I think there is a nice uh, uh, utility available here, so maybe you guys can use this basic VI commands. Uh, 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 for a new person who doesn't know anything, you can just use this and uh, just paste it into the chat window. That everyone can see this. I should send it to everyone. Okay, so use that. Uh, maybe uh, let you give some uh, basic uh, understanding of the steps or uh, on how you can navigate around across your uh, Linux. <laughs> Now, so two instances are done. Now, for the coming to the third instance, <clears throat> I need to add the third instance also. First of all, let's add the third instance. Uh, the third instance is this one. Load this and uh, change it here. That's the easiest way. Then uh, uh, your SSH, SSH key and all will be the same. So you are naming it as instance three and batch two. Okay, so, so save that. So we have instance three and batch two. Okay, now I can connect here. Uh, this. So sudo vi. Okay. So right now nothing is there here. So I go. Uh, I can simply do the cat of etc hosts and pick it up from here and add it here. Okay. Now all three hosts are set up here. Okay. 60, 61, 62. On the node, uh, on the node 62 is what I've done. Okay, this is this is indicating this is the IP address, right? This is the IP 62 I have done. Seven quit. And then your uh, uh, second instance 61. Okay, 61. Just verify if it's available. It's the host. And your first instance. So for all of them, I have set up your, uh, set up the, <coughs> uh, uh, set up, updated the etc host file. Let me clear this, uh, clear everything. Uh, then uh, finally, uh, now, now this step is done. This is your prerequisite step. Okay, instance one, instance two, and instance three. All the compilation is done in your etc host file. So this is what your page four is referring to. Okay. Now the next part is to download the uh, to download the installer. Okay, so the download the installer, uh, I can simply type in what I am seeing here. Uh, oh, I think I don't have it here. I have to type it again completely. <coughs> so easiest way for me to do is. Uh, Cloudera.com, Cloudera Manager. Okay, so you're doing a CM5 installer. So instead of Cloudera Manager, I would do CM5 slash installer latest. Right, you're taking the latest and then the panel file. So this is the bin file. 
this is what is a one click binary file i would say typically uh, you can copy here paste it and uh, download this so now go back to the instance where you want to install your uh, uh, you want to install your cloud manager your w get okay w get is again a utility which will uh, help you to download this uh, binary directory okay and i hit enter so this has downloaded the bin file okay this has downloaded the bin file now you need to give <coughs> execute permissions for your binary file <coughs> excuse me guys sorry about that now uh ch more uh, 755 uh, now you change the permissions okay permissions are changed so that you give uh, given it an executing permission Right. Any file that you set up on Linux, if you want to execute it, uh, you need to have executable permission. That is read x. Okay. So read write x. So x is what is indicating an execute permission. Now, uh, this is your step four. Okay, you this part is done right now. So once you get once your w get runs properly, do the installation. Uh, do the ls. Okay, this is what your step five is. Step five is done. Now I am ready to run this program. Okay. How do I run this now? Uh, I do a sudo, okay, and then run the binary. Uh, before the, before running that, one step I want to show you is uh, uh, generating the keys. Okay, so what are these keys? Okay, why why do we need to generate the keys? Uh, you see, if I say host, now if I do SSH to 60, okay, host 60, okay, it says yes, but you are getting a permission denied. Okay, you are getting a permission denied, and uh, uh, and why is this permission denied? So this permission is denied because you do not, uh, it is not allowing you to log in, right? So what I'm basically doing is uh, I'm trying to log in from this uh, instance 61 to instance 60. Okay, to instance 60. So when I log, when I say login, what I'm doing, I'm basically doing a SSH. Okay, secure shell login. So that is how you normally log in, right? I did an SSH into this machine. This is my SSH uh, instance. Now, how do I overcome this? Any guesses, guys? Anybody out of experience, Linux guys should be knowing this. <coughs> uh, Linux administrators know this. Apart from Linux administrators, anybody else have any experience on this? Okay, forget about it. Leave it. Uh, so, uh, first thing is I'm logging in as a root user. Okay, so even the root also I'm trying to access. Uh, uh, let's say oh, SSH 261. I mean, I'm trying to do it to the same machine itself. It is still permission denied. Okay, so even though I'm logged in as root, I'm, I'm still getting permission denied. How do I know if it's root? I do ID, it is indicating my ID is root. Now, <coughs> So, anybody knows how to overcome this? Never mind, no problem. Uh, that's fine. Uh, so, so what we'll do right now is we'll we'll first make sure we are able to access each of the servers from each from this node. Because this is my primary node. Uh, this is where I'm installing my uh, uh, this is where I'm installing my Cloudera manager. So from this server, it has to be it has to seamlessly log into any other machines without prompting for the password and also not getting this permission denied so what do i do have you guys heard of a private key and a, and a public key okay so the type okay so right now we need to generate a private and a public key so what is a private key and a public key is uh, uh, <coughs> Uh, let me let me finish this stuff and then I'll explain to you. Uh, that's right. Yeah, Navin is saying generate key. That's right. Uh, uh, Navin. Uh, so I think Navin is a Linux guy, so he knows that. So so it, these are the private and a, uh, and a public key is what is. Uh, let's say let's say uh, you are you are an entity uh, or you are uh, an organization and uh, and only a restricted people should have access to you inside. I mean, get inside inside the organization. 
or or to the website only a restricted people should have access to log into your website so what you can do is instead of having your authentication you can have a handshake mechanism in there the handshake will happen in such a way that you you will have a public key distributed which is broadcast to the entire world okay and then you will for yourself you will have something called a private key so the private key is private to you okay which is private to you and so anybody wants to have established communication with you should indicate to you that they have is a public key only if they have the public key okay only if they are authorized if they have the public key then only the public key and the private key handshake will happen the private key will see if the public key is matching with the key that has been generated then only it you will be in authorized authorized to get inside okay so that's what the handshake mechanism happens so the handshake is something which is uh, uh, i mean which is based on your keys and now the first thing that we need to do is generate those keys okay generate what keys your private key and a public key so what kind of a key i'm doing there are multiple ways to generate this one of them i'm doing is rsa key you can also do a dsa key okay but most popular ways are rsa and dsa and hyphen p i'm not giving any password here okay so hit enter don't key i don't type in any um, uh, passphrase here just say enter okay now uh, it is indicating a key has been generated and where is this key has been generated the key is generated in this location okay root dot ssh so you guys know what dot ssh is uh, as any any file or folder that starting with a dot is a hidden file okay which you will not be able to uh, usually look into it so root i am looking into root <coughs> uh then uh, ls dash l okay i don't get anything it says totally zero now now this is the location it's created how do i view this i view this with the option with the switch hyphen la <clears throat> okay now i can see dot i mean i can see the files uh, folder starting with dot ssh you get dot so this is your uh, dot ssh is your hidden folder so go inside that dot ssh you will have two keys generated one is a private key one is a public key id underscore rsa is private key id underscore uh, rsa dot pub is your public key what you need to do you need to distribute this public key to all the machines okay to all the machines so let's see how we can do it first of all i want to make sure i can log into the account can log into the machine itself right so if i do ssh <coughs> sorry uh if i do ssh to the machine itself i get simply copy oops my on 62 oh, 61 sorry okay it is not allowing me to log in it says permission denied right so how to overcome that now that you have your private key and a public key open up your public key open up your public the key there is an entry in here okay this is your key this value what do you do you copy into something called authorized keys you see the folder here you see the file here authorized keys okay open up here and i'm just making an entry here so save this entry now if i do the ssh okay now if i do ssh to the same machine itself it is logging in now earlier i got a message saying permission denied okay now that i have added the key into my authorized keys okay the public key i have added into authorized keys now the handshake happens okay now the handshake happens when the handshake is happening it is authenticating it is telling to the host that this is my pub, this is the public key i have can you authenticate me into you okay so the host that is actually looking at the public key will uh, will will make sure its private key is able to uh, establish communication and see if the if the if, if this key pair is matching if the private and the public key pair is matching then only it will allow you that's your first step okay your first step so so to the machine itself you are able to do now you should you have other nodes also right so 60 61 and 62 so on 61 you are able to do it so 61 you are using as a cloudra manager <clears throat> so from the cloudra manager machine 
it should log into your 60 your other nodes also okay node 60 and node 62 as well so let's let's add this and make sure you're able to log into other nodes so if you want to verify if you are able to log into 61 from here ssh sorry to node 60 you cannot log in it just is authenticated uh, i mean uh, first uh, uh, first time you're logging in so it will keep on adding into known host list now it says permission denied so how do you overcome this same exactly uh, the same thing what we have done uh, id dot pub entry so copy this key and paste it into the host here so sudo su so vi slash root dot sh and authorized keys and here is what i am adding okay <clears throat> on node 60 i have added okay now node 62 do the same thing for node 62 also uh, sudo su so vi uh, root and uh, dot sh and authorized keys open it up oops i have, I have blank space copied <coughs> okay so this is your <coughs> This is the public key of your node manager of your cloud run manager server. So once this is done, uh, now come back into your uh, cloud run manager server where you want to install cloud run manager. Okay. Now do an SSH to 60. Okay. So earlier I got a permission denied, right? Still so permission denied. Now see if your permission denied is still there. Now I'm logged into 60. See this? So I'm here on 61. Okay, on, on 27.61 I am here. From here I am able to SSH into 60. So that is why how it is happening. It is happening with the with your private and the public key combination where the SSH is uh, the handshake is happening now. <coughs> so this is one of the primary prerequisite before you proceed with any other steps. Now uh, my root my root, I don't want need any root access now. <clears throat> yeah, in fact, everything should be running as root itself. So the next steps are uh, that step is not documented here, guys. Okay, the SSH key generation I think is not in this document. I hope uh, you made a note of those steps. Uh, and uh, if you have, you, I mean, if you have missed that, you can simply replay this uh, recording and make sure you follow those instructions step by step. <laughs> Uh, basically, uh, basically, uh, you need to have this done. If there are hundred nodes in your cluster, you need to have this done from your cloud run manager server. You need to take the public key of your cloud run manager and add it to the hundred different nodes, which will be running as your slave nodes or which will be part of your cluster. So the entire objective is from my cloud run manager server, I should be able to SSH seamlessly. Okay, I should be able to log in without any uh, any issues without there should not be any permission issues there. <coughs> now let's start with the installation, the actual installation. Uh, before that actual installation, I also want to copy the private key and save this. Uh, the, the, the private key sudo su. Uh, I will tell you why I'm taking the private key. Uh, we need a when we are doing the installation. <coughs> ID is called RSA. So this is the my private key. This private key, let's say uh, I want to store it into a file. Uh, oops, one second, guys. Yeah. <coughs> the text file uh, 
We need this private key at one place. So while doing installation, well, I'll show you that while doing it. <coughs> Let me clear this. LS. So you have Cloud Grab Manager installer bin file binary file here. So sudo dot slash Cloud Grab Manager. So now see uh, my prerequisites are all done. Okay, all the prerequisites are completed, so I should have a smooth installation uh, process going forward. So where I am right now on this document, I am in step five. So between uh, between before you actually start, uh, maybe after uh, after your step three, after your step three, maybe you can do a uh, SSH. Uh, uh, just make sure you add your uh, uh, SSH key generation, and you can start with the following steps here. Okay, now we'll start the installation. So this is, a, this is the first screen you'll get, okay, indicating your, uh, you're installing your Cloud Run Manager readme file. So accept it, accept the license, and uh, you need to accept the Cloud Run license as well. And this will also install you the uh, Oracle uh, uh, Oracle JDK. Okay, so now it's, uh, Java is now it's Oracle owned, so it's uh, Oracle's uh, license is what you need to accept. Then. Uh, the license and it's starting with the Cloud Run Manager repository. So if you go back and just step your uh, document, uh, step seven is the wizard launched. Step eight, okay, you accept the license. Okay, step nine, you accept the Cloud Run license. Then, um, then it's this is where it is uh, doing the installation now. <coughs> Uh, because these are on EC2 instance, uh, uh, the install should be quicker. Uh, it, should, it should happen very faster. So, any any questions so far, guys? <laughs> Uh, yes, please go ahead. Um, so, in the real world, uh, do companies use um, Cloudera or Hortonworks? Um, I mean, sorry, <laughs> that, that wasn't my. Yeah, it, it, that's fine. That's fine. So, it's a basic question, but yeah, good to know. So, see, what will happen is uh, uh, basically why people go for Cloudera or Hortonworks is because of the support they give. Okay, so uh, I mean, you cannot run and install or uh, manage a cluster without having a Hadoop experts. Okay, so when I say uh, Hadoop experts, uh, I'm talking about the open source Apache. So open source Apache is what? Yesterday, what we downloaded all the manual steps. Okay. okay, apart from manual steps, you need to open up each of your configuration file and do the settings there, right? So unless you know in and out of your Hadoop cluster, it will become a problem. Now, now earlier, uh, I mean, I was working for an organization earlier where we started with open source Apache. Now, what happened over a period of time, the cluster usage has grown, and and it was the scale of the usage has scaled up to about 1.5 petabyte scale. Now we had expanded it from a 10 node cluster. Initially, we sp we spin up a 10 node cluster. Then it has expanded to about 50 to 60 different nodes. <laughs> now it became difficult for us to manage because we don't know. At that point of time, three years back, we were learning it. Okay, this is the first time we were learning it, and we don't know the in and out of it. So, so it became very difficult for us to uh, to start with the uh, with the maintenance and the regular support work. So we obviously had to had a tie up with Cloudera. Now, when we had a type with Cloudera, everything is coming to you on a platter. Okay, so what will happen is they will package it to you. They will say, instead of downloading it for yourself, you use our Cloudera manager and simplify the installation. Now, when I have a 100 node cluster, what it is becoming for me is I just need to add those 100 nodes into the etc host file, a one time, one time entry, and make sure and make sure your Cloud Run Manager is able to, or the server where you have your Cloud Run Manager, it is able to access all the nodes. 
okay so that's the simple steps now from here on i simply say i can simply use wizards okay simply say next 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 and a simple wizard uh, installation so that's why people will have a tie up with uh, these vendors and primarily uh, the reason they have a tie up with these vendors and why they pay such a huge license cost is because when you are running a production cluster you can't afford downtime okay so there are there are machine critical applications where where uh, a downtime of your cluster for a day or two could cause a huge uh, impact to the business so to avoid revenue loss they are ready to pay as much as possible or, i mean they are ready to pay and purchase the license so when you have a license you can open a ticket with cloudera or hortonworks those guys will immediately try to replicate it and provide you the best solution available okay and and their objective is to bring up the cluster at the shortest time frame so this support you will not have if you are going with an open source apache if oh. you have an issue if you have a bug with open source apache right so so i mean i mean we also struggled earlier okay we had a bug with our open source apache we didn't have a type with the uh, uh, cloudera so cloudera and uh, and i think it took us almost uh, three or four days but in the in the meantime uh, uh, finally we had to get hold of a guy who was working with cloudera and uh, he has, has helped us resolve the issue and ultimately that so uh, uh, the organization that was working previously had a tie up with uh, cloudera also <coughs> So, if the if if I am a company, if I am a mid size or a, a bigger than that company, where do I get my um, my cluster from? Uh, okay, now coming back to the question, if you want to set up your cluster on your own, yes, you can you can do it. Uh, Cloudera provides you a free, uh, uh, I mean, freeware or you can say. Uh, open open without license you can still download the packages which i'll show you in a short while what that is called but the disadvantage is you will not have support okay but everything will be as exactly as your enterprise class uh, or enterprise uh, uh, support will be there uh, apart from except for the support so you can download install you can run your cluster but if you are hitting up some issues uh, you cannot go back to cloudera you can do it on your own and that's one way to install the second way is you get an experts who are really good hands on into your uh, hadoop and let them do the apache hadoop installation mm -hmm. so so i think some of the major companies are still running like ebay they are still running uh, they i mean though they go with hortonworks and uh, cloudera installation they also have a 1000 node cluster or maybe i think 800 node or 500 node cluster which is still running an open source apache so so if you i mean if you want to look at that scale uh, you re need to really get into the each and every part each and every aspect of how how do works and if you have those kind of experts you can start your own uh, uh, cluster uh, uh, running on open source apache mm -hmm. now <clears throat> Now this step is done. Uh, I think I missed. I just said okay to one of the steps here. So finally, when you say, uh, I mean, after your step 11, it says point your browser to localhost 7180. So that is where your Cloudera manager is running. Okay, and log in with username and the password. So let's see that. Let's say uh, it is saying 7180. First of all, I want to verify if my Cloudera manager is up and running or not. Okay. So how do I do that? Uh, I can do ps grep or just say cloud around. Okay, something is up and running here. Some process is up and running here right now. Okay, now, now I need to access this. So to access this uh, web GUI, this is running on 61. Okay, to access this on web GUI, I use this public DNS. Okay, and go in here. Oops. Seven one eight zero. Okay, so there you go. So you have a a GUI created now. Okay, and admin interface is created. So I'm logging with, with the instructions are given here. Okay, how do you log in? Initially, when you log in, you log in with the user ID admin and the password admin. Okay, 
space admin logged in here <clears throat> so this is the first screen you would see when you initially log in so as I was saying earlier so Cloudera provides you free wares okay I mean in the sense uh, Cloudera Express this comes with free you don't need to pay for the license the node limit uh, earlier there was a limit in here where uh, you can you can set to about I think for the free version you have about uh, 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 you have about maybe I think 20 nodes now with this latest version of uh, CDH I think they have removed this uh, limit and you can install on any number of nodes now you see if you are very good at your Hadoop support if you have the contents on your guys who can run your cluster you can still go with this one but if there is I any mean, there are, if your application is mission critical and you cannot afford a downtime of even a single day or even for a I mean, for an hour or so you would go with the purchasing the license okay this is a license where you need to upload the license you need to purchase the license and basically uh, uh, basically it's the license is based on the number of nodes so if you have a hundred node cluster you need to pay the license for each and every node okay you, you need to purchase hundred licenses okay so that's how Cloudera will work now for the purpose of this demo what we are doing is we are taking Cloudera Express okay which doesn't require a license and I'll say hit continue okay now uh, just an indi a message indicating what are all the packages that will be downloaded here okay so your Apache see everything is your Apache see your, your HDFS your common libraries your MapReduce YAM is from Apache HBase okay again from Apache Zookeeper Uzi Hive Hue is a licensed product okay this is again a, this is again a Apache but it's a licensed product then you have a Flume then Cloudera Impala so Impala is a, is a Cloudera offering Impala is your uh, MPP okay is your massively parallel processing let's say uh, I'm sure you might have heard of something called uh, Green Plum so Green Plum is an MPP database in the same way uh, Cloudera Impala is an MPP database okay so which typically runs on your Hadoop on your HDFS it will leverage your HDFS then your Cloudera search uh, this is again a new uh, uh, this this is a new offering uh, from Cloudera search okay so and then your spark so all these all these are open source Apaches right your open source Apache products if they have they have repackaged them they have taken those and added their own packages and providing you as a as a as a nice uh, tarball or a nice uh, uh, nice parcel okay I'll, I'll show you what parcel is in the next slide so but but this is how I mean when you talk when you talk about a tarball or a parcel so Cloudera calls them just parcels starting uh, uh, version CDH 4.5 so you download a parcel a tarball or a parcel installation now hit on continue so these are the exact same steps captured in the document guys okay so you're logging in here you're logged in you choose in uh, Cloudera Express then this is what you are seeing you just did a continue here and and the next step is what is your indicating what are the different hosts okay in this cluster installation now my first host is my host 60 okay paste it here comma separated okay 60 61 62 in this uh, 61 and 62 okay three different hosts so I need to make sure these different hosts are all given here now if you have a hundred node cluster what you do you simply add all those entries here and do a search so so it is making sure these uh, these nodes are available these nodes are reachable okay it says the host is ready and is currently managed so what is currently managed uh, managed is something in the sense uh, uh, any node that is added to this uh, uh, and any node that already have a Cloudera manager or not, is, or not so this is verifying if the Cloudera packages are already installed or not so as of now we have not installed any Cloudera packages I mean, especially from your Cloudera manager that's why it says no okay so you have your all three nodes 60 2760 2761 and 2762 so hit on continue here
Now the Cloudera manager, in, uh, sorry, the Cloudera installation will start. So here is where he's asking you to select the repository. The repository can be either your packages or your parcels. So this is a recommended option. So basically nothing, it's the same thing, but they call it as a uh, parcels is what CDH uh, Cloudera calls it starting version 4.5. Now, choosing one of the versions, I would go with the latest version, 5.4, okay, which is available freely. Then, uh, uh, additional parcels, uh, you can download these or not. I mean, you can simply uh, say none. As of now, we are doing a default installation, or I would say a, a minimal installation. Just want to make sure uh, the install is complete successfully on the three node cluster. I hit continue. Okay, so this will also have Cloudera Manager also does the uh, JDK installation. Say so continue here. Okay, this is a single mode, uh, single user mode where uh, only a single uh, everything will run as a single user. So don't choose here anything. Just say continue. So we are on step in the document. We are on step uh, uh, step 16. Still on step 16. Now here is where the important thing is. See, it is asking whether you will log in to all the hosts as a root user or another user. If it's a different user, for that specific user, you need to set up a give the user ID and you 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 need to set up a SSH. You need to generate the keys for that particular user. But basically, in your production environment, everything you you first time when you do installation, you do with the root user. Hey guys, guys, here, just give me one second, guys. Just give me a minute. Okay, uh, sorry about that, guys. Now, <clears throat> now, so log into all the hosts as root user. Now, uh, uh, the second thing is all the hosts accept same private key, right? So the same password or the same private key. Now, the reason why I have copied, if you remember, I copied the private key, right? This is why I'm using it here. Okay, I will be using this that file here. So choose it. Oops. Oh. Uh. So the one I have is ID RSA batch two. Right. Choose this file. This is my private key. And uh, right now they, I have not given any passphrase, guys. Okay, if you remember earlier, I just hit enter, not given any passphrase. I hit on continue. Say so, okay. Now it says the installation in progress. All right, so the installation is continuing. So uh, what it is doing is right now it is downloading all the packages, okay, installing the Oracle uh, JDK. So earlier, if you seen yesterday, we had to do it manually, right? So instead of doing it manually, uh, you do it via your Cloudera manager. It, it does all your uh, uh, download the packages and starts the installation. So this is done with your installation of your JDK. And now it is installing the Cloudera manager agent packages. So what will happen is uh, you will have a Cloudera server and an agent. This is again a this is again a server and client server architecture where you have a server. You have a server is your Cloudera manager and your agents, right? Your clients will have all the agents. Now, now don't confuse that your this is completely different from your Hadoop. Okay. So how it will happen is uh, you have a Cloudera manager here. You can say. Cloudera Manager, 
and is your Flutter Manager server one server? And you'll have multiple uh, uh, instances you might be running, right? So you might have a data node here, data node here, data node here. So all this will have a Cloudera agent. Cloudera agent. Okay, so Cloudera agents talk to Cloudera manager. Okay, so this is how it controls. Okay, so Cloudera agents talk to the Cloudera manager. Now this is different from your Hadoop guys. Okay, this is exactly, this is not, don't don't relate this to Hadoop. This is a completely different from your Hadoop. Okay, so it, it runs as a layer on top of it. Okay, so we have a Cloudera manager. Cloudera manager is the guy which is controlling with, uh, the each of the servers with your Cloudera agent. Okay, so this is a Cloudera Manager agent or a Cloudera agent will be installed on each of the machines. Now it says installation completed successfully. So it's a very simple thing. So earlier we had to download, okay, modify the uh, individual file, but now here I don't need to do anything. Using a GUI, I simply select the host and say next, 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 just use a wizard. Now it says install is completed successfully. Just, just hit on continue. Now we are on page, uh, we are on page, uh, uh, sorry, uh, page 9 and uh, step 17 is done. Step 18 is also done. And now, uh, now the actual download is being done, right? So uh, the packages are being downloaded, the parcel, okay, the, you see here the parcel, this is what the parcel is talked about. So the parcel is being downloaded. Once it downloads to one machine, it will distribute to all the nodes in your cluster. If there are 100 nodes in the cluster, yes, it will download into one location and from that one server, it will distribute to all the nodes and uh, download, distribute to it and unpack it. Unpack it is your tarball, right? Whenever you have a tarball, you un unpack it, untar it and then you activate it. So right now it's download is done. Uh, it's starting with the distribution. I think the new version uh, has a slight difference in the way this is being shown here. Uh, okay, so step 19, uh, the, this uh, step is slightly changed. So it is showing up here. So it's node 1, 2, and your 3. Okay, 60, 61, and 62. It will show you the status here. There you go. So it is distributing these packages to all the machines. Uh, this might take some time. Uh, the next steps that we have is uh, select the package you want to install. Okay, so you go with Azure Core Hadoop or uh, with uh, Hadoop with HBase, Hadoop with Impala, or any of the packages together. So I'll just show you that. So the distribution is done now. It is unpacking it, untarring it. So this uh, this will simplify the installation, guys. Okay. So tomorrow, if you are wanting to manage your uh, hundred node cluster, what you need to do is simply add them here, and uh, you can just sit and watch. Okay. Now it says activated. That means, see, basically what we are doing right now is we are see if you if you want to have a cluster setup. Okay.
if you want to have a 100 node cluster setup, on each of the node, you need to have Hadoop installed. Okay, you need to have Hadoop installed. When I say Hadoop installed, that is your Hadoop packages. Okay, the binary files, the library should be installed. So that is what we are doing right now. We install everything that comes as a package. Okay, the next step is choosing, choosing in what are the, or, or maybe it is doing a uh, host check. Okay, it's just trying to see if these uh, servers are all uh, running good or not. Okay, this a quick check will be done. Uh, what does this say? Uh, you can ignore the warnings. Okay, there are no errors as such. Parcels are activated, has some components uh, in, installed in. See, we had done this installation yesterday, so that is what it's saying installed independently. Uh, using CDH packages, the following ports. See, yesterday we had done the, we had done the uh, Cloudera manager, in, uh, Cloudera packages download installed manually. It is still identifying it. You can ignore that also. And this uh, swappiness, okay, swappiness is something which is, uh, which maybe you can do at a, at a higher level, okay, once you go into advanced thing, you can do, you can learn that, but from a, from a development perspective, it's not required, so you can ignore all this. So there are no, there are no errors as such, it's just a, a warning, so out of this validation, just some warnings, you can still continue with the installation. Click on finish. So up until now, what you have done is you have set up Hadoop packages on all the servers. Okay, you have set up Hadoop packages on all the servers. Now the step comes where you need to set up your cluster. Okay, when you want to set up your cluster, what is that you choose? Okay, so you, whether you want it only a core Hadoop or Hadoop with HBase or with Impala, any of these components, or you can do all of them. Okay, so these are different individual packages that you can install along with your Hadoop. So typically I'm choosing core Hadoop. I don't want to use HBase as of at this point of time. You can add, okay, you can add this later at any point of time. So I'm using core Hadoop. Now what my core Hadoop is HDFS and YAM. Okay, along with Zookeeper, OZ, Hive, Hue, and Scoop. So this is, this, is a, this is your core Hadoop which comes as a package with your CDH. If you had to do it uh, separately, you had to download each of these individually. And click on continue. Now, this is what? This is your step uh, from the document. Uh, this is the step uh, 20. Okay, this is step 20 on page 10. So I'm not, I'm not making any uh, changes here. I'm just going with the uh, default uh, role assignments. So what we are doing here is what you are deciding what is your name node, okay? What is your data nodes? What are the data nodes and what are the different components on which host will be, uh, which host what will be running in? Okay, so this is, uh, this is the place where you decide how many name nodes you have, how many, uh, sec if you want to have a second name node or if you want to go with the HA and if you want to have how many data nodes you want. So all this is being uh, decided here. So I'm not making any changes. I'm just going with the default settings here. I say continue. Okay. Now, now uh, there are there are other ecosystem tools. So you might have heard of uh, Hive and Uzi. So these uh, would be requiring a database. Okay. These would be requiring a database to store the metadata information. So that metadata information by default, they come with the PostgreSQL and uh, this is embedded. So Kundan is saying, so we are working with Hadoop 1X. Uh, uh, no, 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 Kundan. This is a Hadoop 2. Okay, CDH5 is a, uh, CDH 5.4 is Hadoop 2. See, by default, it comes with a secondary name node. Until and unless you enable HA, you will have secondary name node. The moment you enable HA, your secondary name node will be replaced with your standby node. So if you don't enable HA, you'll still have you'll still have secondary name node even on your Hadoop 2 also. Okay. Just do a quick test connection here and make sure uh, uh, these databases are up and running and they're good. And click continue. HA is a high availability. Now, 
Now here is where uh, uh, these directories are being created, right? So you are setting up uh, the directory location. See, yesterday we have given uh, the data node default location, right? So if you remember, yesterday we have, we have, we have indicated where my uh, uh, default, uh, uh, where my metadata should be written. So all these are the locations where you are writing all your metadata. So your name node uh, information, right? So the property that we defined is dfs dot name node dot name dot dir and dfs dot data node dot data dot dir. So all the details where we have opened the file manually and did the changes. It is providing me an opportunity or it is providing me an interface. From the interface is what I can simply uh, open the, I mean, I can simply enable, uh, add the entry here. Once I add the entries here, this will update your XML file. Okay, I'm not making any changes here. And if you go to this document, uh, even in this document also, uh, I'm just going with the default settings here, I say continue. Now the install is progressing now. Uh, see, had you been doing this with open source Apache, right? So there are a lot of manual steps. Uh, so that's why I need to understand, I need to see where each of this, uh, what setting each file will go on. And uh, and you need to, I mean, you need to make sure there are no typos also, make sure those files are properly uh, uh, edited and to make sure everything is good. So this is what is simplifying your uh, steps here. Okay, this is failed to create books. Oh. Failed to create, uh, failed to execute command start on HDFS. So if the errors coming up, how do you verify those errors? So all these errors will be locked inside. Uh, that law. Okay, so in here you'll have a uh, Cloudera ICM server, right? So uh, why is that? This is owned by um, so yes, you know, um, so Cloudera ICM server. Log file. Let's see what's happening here. Uh, Fail to start HDFS. Uh, it is not started HDFS. Uh, why is it? Uh, let me figure out why the HDFS is not started. Uh, most probably because we have created under slash MNT. So if the slash MNT is there, yes. MNT is uh, it is owned by DFS. Sorry, uh, it is owned by root. Okay, and uh, okay. If you if you if you click back a little here and see your MNT DFS CDN, right? So this is what might be causing the issue because it has got did not got previous good permissions. 
This is owned by HDFS. That's correct. Okay, so DFS is owned by root and uh, HDFS Hadoop. So, uh, uh, change mode or change the ownership. <coughs> HDFS. So we are doing it first uh, slash ninety. I do hyphen R. I do it recursively. Uh, I do okay. So if I do uh, uh, MNT should be owned by now. MNT should be owned by HDFS Hadoop. Within that, I have <coughs> DFS, which is should be opened by HDFS and Hadoop. Okay, so so my suspect is because uh, because we have done. Uh, 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 I mean, this is given the directory location, so it might not be having permissions to start it here. So so that's one of the suspect you can look at. And easiest way is uh, look at the log files. Var log and figure out the log files. So I looked at uh, Cloudera installer you can log yeah let's look at cloudera installer also cloudera manager installer so the one i looked at is cloudera scm server because uh, the uh, installer should be good maybe you you want to verify one more time just look at the installer see the start server so this is indicating the server is started that is your cloudera manager okay so 248 so the timestamp is 248. The latest one we have is 216. So we are good with Cloudera Manager. Let's come back one directory and look at your Hadoop uh, uh, HDFS. Right. So your Hadoop HDFS. If you see the timestamp, this is the timestamp I was trying to start it here. Okay. Date. See the date here. 249. 248 is what I can relate this easily here. Now let's look at the log file. Uh, this uh, is not created a log file but anyway let me open this file okay so problem connecting to server problem connecting to server on port 8022 so where is this 8022 port coming from this 8022 port is uh, da, 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 da. Is it not connecting to 68022? Let's go back here. Let's see what is running here. So we have a secondary name we're running, we have a zookeeper. So almost all of these are started up and running. So, 60 is what we have done yesterday, right? So let's start, stop this. <coughs> uh, so it's a sudo su, uh, su, okay, I can just say. So pwdx will indicate uh, from where this is being started, right? So secondary node is started from your cloudflare manager, right? That's fine. Then uh, look for, uh, I just want to make sure uh, these are all started from Cloudera Manager because we also did an installation earlier yesterday. So I'm just going to make sure. Okay, there you go. So this is Yarn is started from your uh, uh, user lib Hadoop Yarn. So this is my this is from my yesterday's installation. So I just kill that. Okay. Then. Uh, and the next one I want to see is your resource node manager. Node manager is, um, is it from yesterday? Yes, this is also from yesterday. I just kill all the SLS instances. Then uh, let's verify your resource manager, your node manager, and your main node also is up, right? So, so this is also from yesterday, for instance. So 7.5 is 5. I'm just killing them. 
uh, Kundan is asking what happens when you kill an instance. Uh, see, what happens when I kill an instance? See, uh, there are multiple ways to stop an instance. Okay, basically, I can do is I can do etc init dot d and uh, st uh, init dot d and I can do uh, Hadoop. Uh, yeah, so Hadoop HDFS <coughs> node manager stop or start. Okay, I can just stop here and a start. So this is a graceful stop. Okay, so if you want to stop it gracefully, I can do a stop and a start here. But basically, I don't want to uh, do a graceful start because uh, stop or a start. I mean, don't ever use a kill. Okay, kill will kill. I mean, kill is actually killing that bit. So there is a kill option. You're sending in a signal. Okay, kill is what? Kill is nothing but sending in a signal to this uh, uh, bit, indicating it to stop the process. Okay, indicating it to terminate this process. All right. Now, if I do a PS. Uh, uh, Yes, I can EF and grab for Java. I will have only secondary name node and my zookeeper and the name node. So name node, let's see, I think the name node is not stopped. Uh, PWDX 7601. This is still my old uh, uh, SDS instance. So I want to stop it. etc. Uh, HDFS name no stop. Okay, multiple ways to stop it. See, it says this name node is stopped now. Now, if I do a grab for Java again, okay, we have only so your name node earlier was running earlier has been stopped. So, so either you can use if you, if you want to forcefully terminate it, you use a kill, okay, and then it will stop it. Now come back here <clears throat> because uh, because my name node was running on the other node. I think there might be some issues with the uh, with the way uh, because it already has it running, so it was not able to establish communication to the name node. So let's continue here and see again if we will be able to make any success here. Uh, the client configuration is already deployed. It will, it is trying to redo it again. Oh, now, what is the purpose of stopping and starting? What happens? Uh, stopping and uh, purpose of stopping and starting an instance, right? Stopping an instance is uh, 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 the 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 reason why I stopped is because this instance already has some uh, some of the demons running from yesterday. So because the ports, the default ports will all be same. It is causing a conflicting. Uh, it is conflicting there. So I'm trying to stop those previous instances and then start them on freshly. Okay, start them newly. Uh, it is failed to format the name node. Okay, so uh, uh, let's see uh, uh, error message here because we try to rerun this again. Uh, it is failed to format. Uh, running in non-interactive mode and data appears to exist in MNT DFS NN. Right? Let's go here. MNT DFS. So NN is on. NN is on your this machine, right? Slash MNT DFS. So whatever is there, I'm just removing this here, and your secondary name mode also. So I'm trying to make sure this log file, whatever is log file is being there, I'm just removing that log file on my metadata location, right? So if you remember from yesterday, uh, here is where we have created the metadata. We, I mean, where the metadata is located in, then your uh, NN, right? So here we have a current directory. I showed you yesterday we had a current directory and my FS image is there. So because this is not empty, it is not able to uh, format it. Okay, it is not able to format your rough name node. What I would do, I just say retry it again. See now it says it's formatted now, formatting the uh, HDFS. Now earlier I think it has failed when we're starting our HDFS service, right? So let's see if this gets started now. 
so that's why uh, Kundan was asking why we're taking a new instance, right? So always make sure your instances does not have any of the prepackages installed and uh, and uh, make sure those are all empty, okay? Or else what will happen, there may be some conflicting uh, uh, directories or some of the directories and uh, uh, instances that are running may be conflicting with each other and will not be allowing you to clutter a manager to access that particular uh, that particular process or that particular directory. So if it is not able to access the directories, uh, then the process is going to bound to uh, go down or kill itself. Uh, your HDFS part is done here, okay, HDFS part, so I was saying you uh, look at this in two aspects, one is HDFS storage part and the second one is a processing part, so your HDFS storage part is done, now your, it is continuing with the processing part. Uh, do, 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 what about the metadata? Yeah, so the metadata, see, this is a first time installation, guys. Okay, this is a first time installation where the metadata location should be empty. Now, the upgrade process, right? So, Kunan's question may be uh, related to upgrade. When you're doing an upgrade, that's a different process. So, you, when you're doing an upgrade, what you're doing is from one version to other version, if you're doing an upgrade from different, across multiple versions, you need to make sure uh, you need to make sure the metadata is intact okay your if you if you lose the metadata your there is no point to the data that you have on the cluster so your metadata should be intact and that is the upgrade process is a different steps <coughs> So your, your yarn is done, okay, until here, see if you look at this part here, your storage part is done here, storage is taken care. Uh, history server is what will, ga will give you the history of all the jobs that have been run on the cluster, okay. That I'll explain to you when we run the MapReduce programming and when we show you the MapReduce jobs executing. Now, the next part is your processing part. Until here is your processing part, your processing steps are done. Then we use a Hive meta store. Hive is what? Hive is again your data warehouse tool, okay? Which uh, which can be used by a database guy to run a Hive query language, which is exactly similar to your SQL language. So for that, for Hive, uh, when you create a table in a Hive, the metadata about the table should be residing somewhere, and that somewhere is nothing but a data store, and that store is a database, which is an embedded database, okay? And that embedded database here is by default Postgres database. So that is what it is initially creating it. Now it is also creating a Hive user directory. Now, now once the user directory is created, you start the Hive service. So your Hive service is started. Now starting with the scoop. Okay, so look at this into, I mean, sub segregate this into different, different components and uh, try to understand each component separately. So your storage is done, your processing is done, your Hive is done. Now you're starting with the scoop installation. So what is Scoop? Scoop is again SQL to Hadoop and Hadoop to SQL, right? So the latest version of Scoop is Scoop 2. That's what is coming with uh, uh, with your CDH uh, uh, with your CDH package 5.4. So Scoop 2 is being installed now. So even Scoop will also need to have a data store where it can store the metadata, and that metadata is again into embedded. By default, the embedded database, uh, uh, but by the, uh, the default database that comes with program manager is Postgres, okay? So on the Postgres is what it is doing a uh, data store creation now. Now finally, uh, doing with Auzi. Uh, Auzi is a workflow tool, uh, workflow uh, workflow scheduling tool you can say. Now uh, with, Uzi, uh, with Uzi, you can schedule jobs uh, that can run in a DAG, okay? You call it as a direct acyclic graph, okay? Uh, like say, if there are three jobs, job one, job two, job three. Now, if job, if job, uh, let's say it's in a, the workflow is what? Workflow is the output of one job is will be an input to the second job, and the second job can only run if the job one is successful. Okay, if it is fails, you will not be able to, you should not be running the second job. So that's a DAG. 
direct acyclic graph and that is accomplished with the uzi and this can be any jobs okay this can be a pig job this can be a hive job this can be a uh, this can be a, a, a screw job any jobs can be used with your uzi workflow Now, once the Uzi is set up successfully, it is starting with the uh, Hue. Okay, now Hue is what? Hue is a uh, Hue is the interface, a web interface. Using Hue, uh, you can execute any of the commands that can interact with your cluster. Okay, like say, no, when I say any of the commands, it's kind of a uh, it's kind of a client tool where you can you can submit your uh, uh, your uh, not map reduce you can submit your scoop job you can submit your uh, uh, pig action you can submit your high job anything can be submitted from a gui interface so so basically when you start working as a developer you would be asked to work on a hue so a hue uh, interface will be provided for you and you i mean an account will be provided for you you'll basically log into hue and start interacting with your cluster okay now this is done uh, successfully i'm sitting on continue now it says uh, the services are all installed, configured, and running on your cluster. Okay, so this is on page uh, uh, step. So we are on page. Uh, yes, uh, everything is Java based. Uh, I mean, in the Java based, in the sense, it's just an admin tool. Okay, nothing to. Uh, uh, it doesn't have. Uh, uh, it doesn't. Uh, yeah, it is Java based, but it's an admin tool, just a GUI interface. I'll just show you in a short while. So we are on step uh, uh, 23. Okay. Uh, 23 is done now do a finish here so here is where your cluster would look like <clears throat> as of now nothing has started right now okay that's why it says no data but you have nice uh, graphical interfaces gui interfaces as you can see from this uh, uh, snapshot Right. So I have my HDFS. So it, it is it is saying some critical issues, indicating some configuration issues here, and uh, and I can I can go and look at do those configuration issues. What are those configuration issues? And I'll try to fix it. Now the status this is a bad. It is indicating bad health. Okay, red and green. Okay, if it's a good, it is a green. Or if it's a, I mean, these are still coming up. The processes are still coming up. That's why these are all still in red color. Okay. So the moment everything comes up, uh, it turns out into a green. Uh, now, uh, now if you go inside uh, here, now you can do a add a service here. So earlier I was showing you, right? So I mean tomorrow if you want to add new service, uh, like say, uh, like say HBase, or if you want to implement Impala, you can simply add it there. I'm not, I'm not doing it right now. Uh, so this is how you set up your cluster and. Uh, uh, via your uh, CDH installation. The same thing would be applicable for your uh, HTTP also, your Hortonworks data platform also. In the same way, you can do a HTTP installation. Now, uh, see now, Zookeeper is also green now. HTFS, uh, there should be a configuration issue. So these two warnings are because uh, by default, you should have 3x replication. So, but I have made sure I have only 2x replication, see. Service has two data nodes. Cloudera suggests at least three data nodes for HDFS. So the number of nodes in your cluster should never be less than, uh, should always be greater than or equal to your application factor. Okay. So why is that? Because uh, I mean, it doesn't make sense. If you have three x replication, you have three nodes, or you have two nodes. One, two replications will be on the same node at, at all the time. Right, and if that node goes down, you have only one replication available. So it really doesn't make sense to have a uh, less number of nodes, which is uh, not, I mean, less number of nodes than your replication factor. So the number of nodes in your cluster should always be greater than, not even equal, should always be greater than your replication factor. That is for an effective production system. Now, uh, Kuzan's question was, you I'll just show you the hue also. So hue is where uh, uh, web UI, uh, if you log into hue, so I'll use uh, admin, first time login in, admin, create an account here. Uh, 
Okay, so I can see my query editors. I can I mean, just uh, skipping those steps here. Okay, see, I can execute my query here directly. Okay, instead of logging into any of your machine anywhere, you can simply type in your query. So let's start from table name on and uh, hit uh, execute. It will execute. Okay, via your hue interface. So this is how your hue interface would look like, uh, uh, And uh, using this, you can use, uh, you can browse your cluster. I mean, you can, you can, you can look at your, you can browse the files in there. You can upload files from here itself. You don't need to. I mean, if you are not uh, good at your Linux, uh, you can simply leverage, uh, uh, leverage your uh, browsers here. Okay. So uh, you can do a big action also. You can do a hive action also. Anything can be is possible. Just do that. Right. Okay, so uh, so this is what the installation is, which is an automated installation. And okay, now the charts are good. Okay, so the charts are showing up here properly, except for my HDFS because it is showing a, a configuration issue because of uh, two x uh, two nodes available rather than three nodes. So any questions so far, guys? <clears throat> okay, so uh, we'll take a logical conclusion for today. Uh, I think we are almost done to the steps of uh, coverage. So the admin stuff is what is covered today, and that thing. So we have successfully set up a Cloudera uh, set up a Cloudera cluster on a three-node cluster using our base packages.